resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D Squared. Good evening. This is The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO, the, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. This is your host, D Squared, with Brian Held. Brian Held, how the hell are you, Buckaroo? I am great, man. Great? Only great? I well, expect better from you, sir. Uh, <laughs> well, there's. There's so much stuff flying at us right now, man. I mean, E3 has unofficially started, so tons I, of news I don't dropping. understand that. Why does it not start till Tuesday, but they, they start all the damn press conferences like right now, as we speak, the Xbox is giving more information. We got to do a show. But, I want to be watching E3. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But it, Hurry basi- up. Wrap it up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> basically, the, you know, the big industry uh, manufacturers and, and people who bring us content right? want to be first out of the gate, so they keep kind of edging the stuff. Start earlier and earlier. <laughs> I mean, well, who starts a convention on a Tuesday anyway? Well, I mean, it traditionally E three has been for industry insiders and you know those sorts press to until, until the iPhone came along and we could all actually watch it on Periscope. No, or, or actually, Twitch. this year it's open to the public. So <gasps> that's right, I forgot. Yeah. So, but yeah, that so it's a conference, right? There's all these industry people who you know going flying out there to pr- attend all week long. Is that um, where Scungy is? Uh, Scunty is not. He's somewhere in Texas. <laughs> no, no, he's watching. totally there. <laughs> All right. Well, let's sure. lay out the show because we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Yes. So as always, we're going to open the show with top nerd news where obviously you know where we're going with that. Right. And then, of course, you know, we would normally have Scunty, but I fired his ass and he's not coming back. That is not true, Dave. Until next week. Right. I'll hire him again next week, but right now <laughs> okay. he's fired. And then we have an interview with Don Armijo that we uh, picked up at MobyCon. Yes. Jo- John Armijo is, you might have heard us talk about him with the whole Pop-Tart Adventures thing. We're going to get some explanation behind that and a project that he's working on coming up soon. They're always after me, Lucky Pop Tart. <laughs> Something like that. Right. And then, as always, we'll close out the show with This Week in Geek History. All right, well, let's get into some top nerd news action right now. And now, your top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by the Viridian Tea Company. Find them on Etsy. And now, your top nerd news stories. All right, man. So, obviously, we're going to have Black Panther kind of tipping us off right now in the beginning, right? Oh, definitely, you know? man. I mean, that trailer kind of snuck up on me, but it did drop this week, and oh, man, is it incredible. Yeah, dude. I mean, uh, it, and, and it was only like, what, two minutes long, if that? Not even yeah. like a minute and a half? It's it's very quick snippets of what's going on, but if you dig into it, they did tell us a lot. Do you have some audio for yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, here's here's the first part where it opened up with, uh, uh, what's his Anthony Circus? Or something like that. That and 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 Martin the, Freeman and the Hobbit. Yeah, it, the Martin, Hobbit guy. Yes. Yeah, he has a real name. He what does. Do you know about Wakanda? It's a third world country. Textiles, shepherds, cool outfits. All the front explorers have searched for it. They called it El Dorado. They looked for it in South America, but it was in Africa the whole time. I'm the only one who's seen it. He made it out alive. He's the only one who made it out alive. Now, he, he was missing an arm. Didn't okay. he lose that in Iron Man, though? So here's the deal is uh, I had to go dig into this guy. Um, he is actually Claw, right? Do you remember that character? He's a big... <laughs> The claw from like Inspector Gadget? Well, well, no, no. no. Okay. It's basically the guy in, in the comics. He lost his arm and he replaced it with this sonic emitting like blaster gun thing. That it's, sounds lame. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. lame. Like Stilt Man. But he's a, a big antagonist of, of Black Panther throughout the comics, and that's okay. who this guy is. So, oh, yeah. Oh, so he rats out where Wakanda is. Well, right. He's they, he, he's been smuggling a vibranium out of Wakanda for years. So. Right. Well, well, the funny part is apparently Wakanda has a very bad uh, information department, you know, like like a tourist. Uh, uh, they don't have a tourist advisory commission that's like, come to beautiful Wakanda. Yeah, they don't want anybody to show up. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, they have a very isolation, isolationist society, right? Because they, they're very technologically advanced. Right. Uh, and so they don't want people kind of just rolling in. And, and so, so for the uninitiated, I guess we have to give a Black Panther primer real quick. He's not in the Black Panthers, the, the political group, right? right. He, he's the Black Panther. He wears like a vibranium suit. Because he's bulletproof. Exactly. And vibranium is what? That's the stuff that, that it's it's 
bulletproof in essence. Well, it's Captain this, America's shield made out of it. It is, and basically it absorbs all vibration. That's the whole deal. So is Captain America's shield really African? Uh, well, it, that's its origin, right? It, the reason that they have so much vibranium is there was an asteroid that hit the Earth. It landed there. You know, they found it and yeah. have been using right. it. I don't want to get totally into the total yes, nerd thing. Right, right. I could, but let's move on because, like, like, like the claw. I mean, obviously, now the 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 whole point of the movie is that Wakanda is going to become uh, the non secret. Everybody's going to know what's going on there. Now, here's a little clip where they're talking about. Uh, this is where all the badass fighting happens. Where right. you got your girls uh, from uh, Walking Dead showing up. You know his bodyguards, which yes. is kind of funny because you don't really need a bodyguard. But I wouldn't want to tussle with his bodyguards either. But here's a little clip. The world is changing. Soon there will only be the conquered and the conquerors. Step into the spotlight. You are a good man. Step into the spotlight. With a good heart. And it's hard for a good man to be a king. So there you go. I know it's it, there's it's very intense. It, it the, the trailer looks like it's really going to be a, a, a movie with a lot of scope. As, oh yeah. As well, you know, it's like you know, I, I think one of the biggest complaints they were first, or, or I guess an excuse of why they couldn't make a Black Panther movie because we're like, how do you depict an African culture? It's like really that was that was really what got it got that yeah, was the problem. Yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but I mean, right now apparently they figured it out because it looks pretty damn awesome. It does, and it's almost like a sort of a reverse origin story, right? Because we we've seen Black Panther already, right? We know and, his dad got killed in Civil War, right? And so now we're going to be you know delving into where he comes from the and mythos. Yes, Ooh, big word, <laughs> fancy word. But it's it's a nice setup, and and I'm very very excited about it. All right, well let's talk about the box office real quick because uh pretty soon we'll be going to break and when we come back we'll we'll really hit into the e3 conference because we got a lot of clips for all the freaking super awesome games that are coming up but apparently the mummy came out uh yesterday well friday whatever that whatever what day is it sunday sunday yawn yeah well you know i mean i was sort of pseudo not really all excited i i i prefer dracula untold but they're saying that's not the beginning of this dark universe uh series so, uh, but apparently the box office has spoken. They made thirty-two million dollars. Yes, on a hundred and twenty-five million dollar budget, Ow. and that doesn't even account for marketing. So, well, you got you got Tom Cruise. What's he asking for? Fifty million right out the gate, probably, and so, a cut of the door, like a dollar per ticket, probably, probably, probably. So, yeah, Wonder Woman still holds the top spot. Um, Wonder Woman, a weekend gross of fifty-seven mil for a total Jesus. domestic gross of two hundred and five mil. So, great googly movie. I know, I know. And this is only the second week. So they, they keep yeah. this trend up. Well, no, let's see, two million. Well, two hundred. I don't know. I can't do math. And even though it's uh, in the third spot, Captain Underpants is performing better <laughs> than the Mummy. That is really bad. <laughs> well, they both have underpants, I guess. You know, they're all wrapped up in in something. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> they're all wearing like white gauze. Uh, sh- sure, that's a bit of a stretch, <laughs> Dave. So uh, I don't know, man. I, I really I wanted the Dark uh, Universe series to do really well. I mean, I, I wanted to kind of see the Mummy uh, series kind of kick off some other great uh, monster movies. Where like you know, I'm not a big 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 fan of like the Creature of the Black Lagoon, but I mean, I really love the old monster movies, and I kind of was hoping that they would you know actually use this as a vehicle to make some actually pretty decent movies. You know, in that Dark Universe, but. This is not boding well either. I mean, it, it, they 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 said Dracula Untold was supposed to be it, but then they said no, no, because it didn't do well. So what are they going to say? This one's not either. Because yeah. if it doesn't do well, they'll be like, yeah, forget about that one too. Well, I mean, third time's the charm. I well, I maybe they're following in the footsteps of DC, right? Oh my God, I hate your face. <laughs> so I just that think- means the third one will be an epic blockbuster that'll put Marvel to shame. Okay, I'm down with that. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just um, if they could get better writers and get a better narrative in here. I mean, I'm not particularly happy with rehashing these old monster movies. And let's, there's plenty of new properties to to bring yeah, out. Yeah, they're not, not going to do it, man. Yeah, no, get, I know. Get, get over it. All right, so you ready well, to go to break? Well, almost uh-oh. because. Actually, this whole discussion that we're having right now, we had in depth with uh, Jeremy Branch over at the Be Terrible podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Be you, Terrible. Yeah. So look up Be Terrible podcast. It's a movie podcast. And uh, we were on there, talked about an, an entire hour. Yeah. And it's yeah. not FCC regulated. Yes, it's not. So, so. so, so gird your loins and check your ears because <laughs> it's going to get nasty. Not really.
I, yeah. I think the strongest word we know how to use is like poop. Right. And of course, well, not because you just used a stronger word An earlier. Expletive. It, right. <laughs> but real quick, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is still on the top 10. It's number five. And they uh, officially passed the box office gross of the original movie. Wow. Yes. Pretty, pretty incredible. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, when we get back, we're going to get into the E3 coverage. Uh, I think Xbox has finally actually wrapped up. So we got some audio from the EA portion with Battlefront 2, this new Star Wars game, and uh, Assassin's Creed, Anthem, I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. So stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Did you know that Relief Windows installs hardy plank siding? Hardy plank fiber cement boards are specifically engineered to withstand damage from moisture, rot, and pests, all while maintaining their beautiful color thanks to Color Plus technology, meaning you won't have the headache of painting anytime soon. Oh, and at Relief Windows, we believe you deserve great products and the best customer service. And that's what we promise to deliver. Call us today, 504-338-1516. Relief Windows is a proud partner of LSU Athletics. I'm Chef Alon Shia, and I love being a tourist right here in Louisiana. It's easy to do thanks to LouisianaTravel.com. Whether it's a day trip outside of town to try a new restaurant or a three-day outdoor adventure with the family, LouisianaTravel.com has all the trip ideas and planning tools you'll need. So log on, explore a great state, and pick your passion in Louisiana. Visit LouisianaTravel.com. Sponsored by the Louisiana Office of Tourism and this station. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com forward slash shop. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. In a New Orleans that never was and never will be, airships float high above the city while platoons of clockwork automatons patrol the streets below. In Storyville, pirates, streetwalkers, gamblers, and thieves prowl back alleys in search of their next mark. New Orleans by Gaslight, the premier anthology of locally written and locally produced steampunk poetry and fiction, all set in Victorian New Orleans. Buy it now, available in both paperback and Kindle versions at Amazon.com. New Orleans by Gaslight. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform and roll out. Welcome back. This is The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5. This is D Squared with... Brian Held. Hey, Brian. All right, we need to jump right into it. That first segment, like, flew by, It man. did. It did. I and tell you. 
Oh, all right, so guys, yes, yeah, Gunji's not here this week. He's off gallivanting in Texas, and so we're going to start talking about E3. The schedule, if you're not already aware, uh, EA had their big press conference yesterday. Uh, Microsoft was earlier today. That's wrapped up. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Bethesda, get your calendar set, is tonight at 11 p.m. CST. Bethesda, what do they make? Make anything good? Yes. Any good games? Yes. Anything like we might have heard of? Fallout and, you know, Oblivion, or, um, Elder, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls. Yes, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I had to, I had, you, uh-huh. you got to play along with me here, Brian. Right. Uh, let's see. Um, so that's, that's tonight uh, on Monday. Well, are, are they teasing anything in particular right now? So there's some, there's a, a rumor going around that they're going to release something or talk about something called Starfield, which is going to bridge the worlds of Fallout and Elder Scrolls. What? Um, well, there's Zenimax, who's one of the development companies, copyright or trademarked that name years ago, okay. but nobody's seen anything, and they think that this is it, that it's going to be like sort of a Mass mm. Effect sort of, you know, space opera role-playing game type Ooh, deal. Which means I know, I know. Um, but the biggest thing, okay, well, what's next after that? All right, so after you're, you're going to want to get your schedule set for the PC Gaming Show that's at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on Monday. Oh, is that where the PC Master Race hangs out and, and throws up high fives to certain flags yeah, or something? Yeah, P- PC Gamer Magazine Big smile. is Big going smile. to have yeah, a whole showcase of all kind of PC gaming, so you're going to want to tune in that. Ubisoft at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, Sony at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's all on Monday. And then Tuesday, Nintendo will have theirs at... um, Let me guess. They're going to release a Mario game and a (laughs) Zelda game and maybe uh, a Pokemon game. Uh, We'll see. And we're done. It's a (laughs) pre-recorded press conference that they're releasing on Tuesday. (laughs) Hi, this this is Nintendo. We're going to make the same crap that's made us money for years. Probably. Without a single twist. So, yeah, and then, of course, Tuesday does officially start E3, and it yeah, runs right. all through the weekend. All right, well, let, let, let's get into Battlefront 2, because, okay. uh, like, like Battlefront 2, that's from EA Games. That's mm-hmm. the new Star Wars game that Battlefront 1 failed on so many levels. This it, is it, everything it should have been. This is everything it should have been. I mean, it, it's not just a multiplayer. There, There's an actual campaign mode to it. They released the story to it prior, but now we finally got to see some of the actual gameplay footage. Now, uh, you go through all the uh, the every era, as it were, you know, right. the, all the, the prequels, the sequels, the, the miniature sequels, whatever the hell they were, the in-betweens. Right. So you have Rey po- to, to play. You can even play Darth Maul. And uh, you can play back as the droids, Roger, Roger. Right. So here, let's take a listen to some Roger, Roger, actually. Okay. Sector is clear. Not clear. Not clear. Not clear. It's Darth Maul. Son of a... Then space oh, combat. Here you go. We're coming up on the Star Destroyer, but we need to clear that escort. Pew, Give pew, them everything pew, we pew. got. Oh. <laughs> I made a mess in the studio. I so I didn't actually. Did you see any gameplay footage of the the Starfighter combat? It, it is coming. Okay. It is actually coming. So like I. I, I if we weren't doing the show right now, I'd probably be watching. It's supposed to be dropping either later tonight or tomorrow. Okay. Or it might actually come out on Tuesday when the conference supposedly starts. But what we saw in that trailer is actual gameplay footage. Yes. yes. I mean, the gameplay footage looks phenomenal. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember Battlefront 3, was it? Or I, I guess where, where, where you had... Uh, in, in the original PlayStation where it was you were running around defending, you know, uh, Naboo and things like that. And you right. started these little little positions. And uh, you were fighting in the streets of, of, of Feed, in essence, you know, the capital city. Yeah. And uh, it looks just like that, but, like, awesome. Right. And, and, like, when you go into these marble colonnaded rooms, you can see there's a difference between marble and concrete. And, you know, when you shoot stuff, you know, it, you know, it leaves little scorch marks. I mean... It looks beyond epic, and it looks like they took some of the classes and actually made classes, you know, similar to kind of like what Battlefield 1 yeah. doing a little bit, you know, and so, I mean, and but Star Wars did that first, though, technically. I'm, you know? I'm just having trouble moving past columnated. Is that an actual word? Colonnades? <laughs> Col- colonnade? <laughs> Shut your pie hole. All right, what's, what's next? Um, well... Bioware. Now, what are, they they make other things. This is why I, uh, I wish Scungy wasn't at the Bunny Ranch right now. Um, <laughs> Anthem. This one looks pretty good. We both kind of watched the trailer, and 
at the code name for this game was called Dylan, and you don't want to know why? Yeah, for Bob Dylan. Because they think this is going to be a piece de resistance. They think they saying this is going to be the best game ever. I, so I don't know. Here, take a listen. The wall. It's our armor. It protects us from what lies beyond. But out there, you either live with the choices you make or die trying to change them. The story doesn't end here. It's just the beginning. Yes. It's, it's, I think that's why they call it a teaser trailer because yeah. it didn't give you a whole lot. It, in the trailer, though, no. one of the monsters looked like gigantic. Gigantic. It looked like it was the size of the wall, kind of like Pacific Rim type wall, right. where you know it. It doesn't look like they were building Jaegers. It looked like a smaller version of like Titanfall, yeah. where like like it's it's a mech because it's got a little comfy chair in it, you know. So I guess they spend a lot of time in there, so they want cushions. I don't know. I, I, Is there a beer holder? I just I'm watching this trailer and, and like none of this can be gameplay. It's just no. It, you this know. is all cutscene kind of stuff, right? right. I mean. It, I don't know. This is the one thing that I hate about teaser trailers because there's no idea what the game's about. Right. I mean, there's really nothing to go on except for here's some really cool animation. We know a guy. You know, he's in California. Probably not even in California. Well, like and Topeka, Kansas. You know, the th- is this you know Bioware's apology? The, these are the same guys who made Mass Effect. The last Mass Effect. There was a lot of mixed reviews on that. A lot of people are angry about it. Yeah, a lot of people are, are are in in lust with Mass Effect. I never really got into it. She wasn't my kind of girl to dance with. You know, so I enjoyed some of it. Yeah, you know, um, but, but I mean, it looks like that's what they want to do. They want to make another. But they they they're, they were they're drawing correlations to like Destiny, the game Destiny. Of okay. So um, I don't know. Oh, I got, I got to give. I got to say hi to, to my my neighbor Omar. He's 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 busting my balls about Battlefront right now. Is he? Yeah, Layla and Anthony are messing with me too. That's just kids. They listen to our show. I hate them. <laughs> 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 All right, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Now here's the thing, man. This one just dropped like an hour and a half ago, and uh, the gameplay footage of this uh, actually not the gameplay. It's it's cutscene footage. Again. Are you sure? Because much like Battlefront, what I saw in that trailer. Could possibly have been gameplay footage. Some of it might have been. I mean, it uh, it Assassin's Creed has some really good battle, you know, uh, game graphics. mechanics and graphics. Yeah. 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 So, but it looks like now they're actually going to go back and use some of the actual mythology because I mean, technically, I think like in the original, like they were aliens, like we were seeded, some weird kind of thing. So mm-hmm. now it looks like there's snakes involved, like like giant like serpents. So here, listen to this. The first to see the gods, the first to tame their beasts. The first to guard the soul from evil. We conquered this land and built an empire. But there are whispers on the wind. A brotherhood born in the shadows. They are the first to call themselves the Assassins. Now we've had Assassin's Creed like in Rome, you know. Right. We've had that one, but this one looked like a uh, like a, the beginning of like like uh, the the Roman Colosseum. Like they had some uh, real like gladiatorial, gladiatorial combat. combat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but, up the next gladiator. But there's a lot of stuff from Egypt too. I mean, he's climbing. Yeah, what, what are those know. swords called? I forgot to Wikipedia that thing, man. The, you know, the Copex is that not a Copex? Uh, it, it's the swords that looks like a weird can opener kind of thing. Yeah. Those are awesome. I want one. Yeah, no, that's in there. And, I mean, it, the all the action spots did look like they could possibly be actual gameplay. Just, you know, it's hard to tell nowadays. The graphics are so good with 4K out. That- well, yeah, I know. It, it's hard to tell. Speaking of 4K, Minecraft is going to be in 4K. What? Well, exactly. <laughs> what the hell is the point of having 8-bit in 4K? Yeah. We, but, we, <laughs> what, you know. Why? High definition 8-bit I, I it graphics. Doesn't even, it doesn't even make sense when you say it out loud. Oh, that's it great. It just doesn't. All well, right. And, there are mods that do add to the graphics of Minecraft, so. Well, yeah, and they're saying that they're taking a whole lot of the uh, the community stuff, kind of like the mods and stuff, and, you know, like that, that other people did, and they're like, oh, that's great. We're going to use it and sell it. Cool, because that's well, that's that's because it's smart. All right, State of Decay two and Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Yeah, and okay, well, well, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I saw the trailer for that. That's coming from Xbox. It literally looks like Street Fighter two, the first edition, like you know, with with, with Blanca and Guile and all those guys yeah. and Bison. Um, it really looks that kind of lame and cheesy, but meet, meets like that meets Marvel versus Capcom with right. the whole super moves, Super Saiyan BS. 
Well, maybe maybe they'll have a, a, a the retro kids. appeal or the something. The kids will love it. Uh-huh. <laughs> like the hula hoop for kids. So tell me about this State of Decay 2. State of Decay is actually, uh, I'm, I'm, we're going to have to have Scungy break it down a little bit more. But the first game was really started like a, on a DLC, but it, and then it came out on disc because it was like a fan favorite. I, and I never really got into it because it was it's, it's an open world thing. You gotta, it's, it's, a, it's a zombie post-apocalyptic world. But you have to build your, uh, you know, your your arsenal. Uh, no, not your arsenal. Your 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 house, not okay. your house, but like whatever the hell your you, base. Yeah, and that, that's the word. You know, all our base are yours, and mm-hmm. so you start there, and you kind of the minutia. You build a garden, you build you know uh, armory, and you know like the ability to make weapons and things like that, and you kind of branch out, and even you got to go as far as to setting you know security and like building towers and blah blah blah, and it seemed really minute and just like i didn't really want to get into that you know yeah. i just want to hack up a bunch of freaking zombies right you, it sounds like you need a slide rule and a yeah calculator I, I, I didn't want to sit around and you know micromanage the zombie apocalypse right i want to get in there and get the blood and guts going okay that's what i'm about you know oh blood and guts the corb day <laughs> that's what they call me you didn't want accounting the zombie game <laughs> Well played, sir. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Uh, Battlefield? Battlefield 1, yes. All right, so they added a new DLC in the name of the Tsar. You get to you get to fight as a chick now, man. Yes, the uh, Women's Battalion of Death. I know, that just sounds awesome. Yes. Well, uh, it, it looks like they're made, like a sniper class almost. I mean, uh, actually, now I'm going to have to go like read a history book because right. that sounds really cool. But it the, does. Rus- the Russians have always been willing to throw their women into combat. Dude, the so Russians good are on them. awesome. I man. wouldn't want to fight a woman no. in combat. Oh, my God, no. No. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, some new maps they're adding. And, yeah, they're going to add a whole bunch of new things to it. I mean, in, in Battlefield 1, I mean, I still love that game. I still love going cool. back and playing that. So all right, I man. can't I can't stop playing Overwatch. This weekend is the anniversary weekend double experience. It's awesome. Oh, speaking of which, uh, I speaking sent Speaking of Twitch? Uh, yes, I sent wow. up a twitch.tv channel for the Weekend Geek Radio show. What on earth is Twitch, Brian Hell? Oh, Twitch is a platform where you can live stream gameplay. You can find it at Twig Radio is is how I set it up. And uh, there's just one video out there right now and it's me just kind of messing around in Overwatch playing badly although i did get one good shot with hanzo and um (laughs) anyway we're gonna try to build that up and have uh some additional content from skunji on there and uh future endeavors with our friends over at igl so awesome all right well guys uh stay tuned when we get back we're gonna have an interview with john armijo from mobicon you're listening to the weekend geek radio show on news talk 99.5 wrno Owning land in this great country of ours, that's one of our most precious rights. And when it comes to taking care of the land you own, you want the best tools. And that's where my friends at Mahindra come in. Mahindra makes the toughest tractors on earth with real steel for more built-in weight. That translates to better traction and stability. And don't forget Mahindra's XTV utility vehicles. Whether you're taking the family fishing or hauling supplies or just driving down to check the mail, You will enjoy the added comfort of 25% more legroom and seating. Right now, if you buy a tractor and a utility vehicle together, you'll get a special $500 rebate. Learn more at MahindraUSA.com. And get your work done, America. Take advantage of rock-bottom prices and test drive a Mahindra today at Southern Trailer Works in Thibodeau. Or visit SouthernTrailerWorks.com. That's southerntrailerworks.com. This is a Crime Stoppers Most Wanted Alert. Crime Stoppers is asking you to speak up if you can help solve the December 25th, 1996 murder of Melvin DeJesus Jr., which took place at approximately 8.15 p.m. in the parking lot in the 900 block of Manhattan Boulevard. Anyone with information on Mr. DeJesus' murder is urged to call Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or download our free Tip Submit app. You can remain anonymous and earn up to a $2,500 cash reward. Take a stand. Speak up with Crime Stoppers. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com forward slash shop. 
Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. When you're in need of pain relief, come to Need It Relief Massage Therapy. Kat is an experienced licensed massage therapist. Check out her website and book your session online now at massagetherapykm.com. Need It Relief Massage Therapy for some much needed relief. Now back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity. Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy. Uh, what's his name again? This is Brian Held with the Weekend Geek Radio Show on News Talk 99.5 WRNO, and I'm here at MobyCon with actor John Armijo. How are you? I am hanging in there, sir. Fantastic. Now you are America's movie cop. Tell me what. What does that mean? Well, America's Movie Cop, uh, I typically play a cop in everything I do. 99, well, I won't even say 99, 90% of the things I've done is as a cop detective because I just have that look uh, like, I, like I'm in charge, I know what I'm doing, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Got the buzzed head, nice posture. So uh, I used to walk onto sets and the crew that knew me would pick on me and say, oh, here comes Movie Cop. The other actors, movie cop, movie cop, constantly just picking on me about it because I was typecast, which I'm perfectly fine with, by the way. But I just said, well, there's something there. I said, I'm just, rather than being annoyed by it, I'm just going to embrace it, and that'll become my brand. I'll be America's movie cop. So, now, you've been a cop in, in some pretty big films, right, like Terminator, Genesis, and, and Logan, right? Yeah, and Logan I was a Mexican federale, which, again, is an offshoot of a cop, <laughs> federal police uh, and Terminator uh, played a San Francisco cop. Uh, yeah, San Francisco cop. So how how long total have you have you been acting? Uh, six years. Last month. No, in March. I'm sorry. Six years. And uh, any any formal training, or you just got fell into it? Well, yeah, just kind of fell into it. Uh, wasn't looking for it, and the film industry hit Louisiana a few years back, and. Uh, just in the right place at the right time, I, I connected with a buddy who was going to uh, a casting call, and uh, I went with him, met the right people, and signed up, and uh, that the, my first day, I booked five little parts as an extra, and that was my way in, starting off as an extra, and just kind of, it's a job above all, if everybody anybody wants to get involved, it's a job above all, remember that, don't let the fame get to your head, don't get the, let the excitement get to your head, be the best employee, the best employee you can be. Be a team player. Do what's asked of you. Don't be a diva. Don't bring an attitude, and you'll go far. That's the difference. I went in with that attitude, which is how I approach my life, and my phone rings. The, the opportunities just came and came and came after that to the point where, you know, working with the casting directors, if they needed a cop, they knew, call John. He'll be there. He's going to do a good job and no problems. That sounds like solid advice to just simply be reliable. So tell me, uh, we had your buddy... Uh, Christopher Heskey on uh, a few shows ago, and uh, he was telling us about a little thing called Pop Tart Adventures. Tell me, get, get expand on that for me. Okay, Pop Tart Adventures is a joke within my household. 
started uh, in my pantry. Just, just I used to make funny little skits with my, with my cell phone and my son. They were about 30 seconds long, 45 seconds long, but uh, and it, it went on for about 18 months. But where it's actually gone now is um, there's a lot of talent in, in the New Orleans area where, where I live, Mandeville, and uh, we're always looking for fun things to do. So we took these little this little idea, which already had a small audience. And said, well, let's open it up to everybody, any, any actors, any crew that wants to come in, and we can just write these skits, and everybody's invited. If you want to get some in front of the camera experience, hey, we'll write you into a skit. If you want to get some behind the camera experience, hey, you can help us with the camera, you can help us with the reflectors, anything, you know, smoke machines. And, you know, we started that not too long ago, and we've already had 70 people get involved, and everybody's bringing something to the table. We have horses, we have ATVs, we have... You know, 501st guys with their stormtrooper outfits. So it's gotten really out of control really quickly. But we're putting out some amazing stuff. I wanted to get some experience as a director and a producer. And my God, we in May alone, we put out three skits. And we have seven more scheduled through August. Each one different and more elaborate. But each one is an opportunity for us to challenge ourselves to try something different. Um, and I'm not the star. It's, it's about taking somebody like Jason Stanley who does a great impersonation of Jason Statham. You know, we wrote a skit with he and I. It's about 50-50, you know, he and I going back and forth. We have a little fight scene. And then he wanted to do another one where he does a great impersonation of Fire Marshal Bill Burns, where I wrote the skit, uh, Michael Langland directed it, and we just turned the camera on, and I play the straight man. Um, but in that skit, I wanted to try filming a montage, which you, you've seen the skit, the first 45 seconds, just a montage, because I'd never done that before. So to, to a professional filmmaker, that's nothing. I've never done it before. So we're able to do that, and then the skit begins, and we just stand back and let them go. And we filmed that in about six hours, and uh, two days to edit it, and it's out, and it's gotten a very good response. Um, the next skit we'll have out next week is a Terminator 2 spoof, and it's all action-based. We have nice steady cam shots and vehicles, something we've never done before ourselves. You know, a month ago we went to Dream to that, having access to, to trails and, and lakes, uh, four-wheelers and, and steady cams. And we've just taken the ball and run with it, and everybody's getting experience, and we're having a good time, most importantly, doing it. We're, we're producing this great content. And uh, that skit's going to have a lot of CGI as well, which, again, I'm, I'm, I've been in front of the camera and other people's productions. These are my productions now. So uh, the Facebook page for that is facebook.com slash Adventures, And you can send me a private message there through that if you're an actor or a crew and just want to help out and get some experience and network and meet other people in our little film community and get involved. Um, we started off with Pop-Tart Adventures because it already has an existing audience. We're just using that now to branch off into other stuff. Eventually, we're going to get out of that. We'll always do them, but that's not going to be the, the, the focus forever. We're going to start to ride our way out of that and get into just individual skits, short stories, and small films. So it, it eventually, you're looking to be something along the lines of uh, like Mad TV or Monty Python or, or Kids in the Hall, kind of a, just a variety of all these different skits. Yeah, actually, speaking of Monty Python, we're going to do a couple remakes of some Monty Python skits in the next month or two. Again, the Beatles didn't start off writing their own things. They did covers first. So, again, we are looking at this as a learning experience. Uh, let's learn how to do this. Again, we've worked on other people's productions. Let's start producing our own stuff. And uh, so that's the idea. Where it's going to go, um, eventually, like I said, we want to just go with skits. They're getting longer and longer, like this Terminator one will be about eight minutes long. But we want to go into short films. I write with a guy named Mike Heron, and he's got a whole pile of scripts lined up for us ready to shoot. Um, in my in my regular film work, I, I look like a serious guy, which you're sitting here looking at me. And that is not my personality. But I'm never going to get hired to do fun stuff because that just doesn't fit my look. doesn't fit my resume. I've worked on a few comedies, but again, it's as a soldier there in Keanu, a militant, or Will Ferrell movies, I play a cop. Nobody's ever going to hire me. In my opinion, maybe it'll happen one day. But uh, so I, if I want to do that stuff, I'm just going to have to do it myself. Fantastic. Now, you mentioned a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, Pop Tart Adventures. Do you also have a YouTube channel? Yeah, we haven't really done much with the YouTube channel. Um, my own Facebook page is facebook.com slash America's Movie Cop. That's my personal page or my professional page. But uh, yeah, we're, we're still very, very early in the stages of all of this. We still need to set up an Instagram account. We, we have a YouTube page, but we really haven't pushed it much. Right now, we've just gone so we put so much in just producing these skits, and we're going to do two a month in addition to our regular, you know, conventions we do and uh, um, regular film work. 
Um, but, yeah, it's gotten a good response. And, again, it's, it's not all about me. It's all about bringing everybody into it. How can we get other people that want to try something? Like, again, I would never get an opportunity to do something comedic. So I'm giving myself the opportunity. And, uh, again, I know a lot of actors and buddies that want to try different things, and maybe those opportunities haven't come yet. Well, let's give you the opportunity. Let's give you the real footage so maybe that can help you get something professionally. So, you know, obviously it's it's all volunteer, but at the end of the day, everybody leaves with something, whether it's an IMDb credit and copy of the movie, a good time. They network and meet other people, and they can go off and do their own stuff. So it's it's been fun, and that, that's the idea. Just It's for everybody. It's not just about me. Fantastic, John. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. We're definitely going to stay tuned for more Pop Tart Adventures, more silly skits that are coming our way. So thanks so much. Cool. Thank you, sir. Would you like to help support a great cause and have some fun doing it? Why not take part in the Alfred Payton Foundation Charity Kickball Tournament, Saturday, June 24th at J.B. Spencer Park in Gretna. All proceeds benefit the Alfred Payton Foundation and the City of Gretna Boys and Girls Club. Sign your team up today. A message from WRNO Communities, helping to make a difference in New Orleans. In a New Orleans that never was and never will be, airships float high above the city while platoons of clockwork automatons patrol the streets below. In Storyville, pirates, streetwalkers, gamblers, and thieves prowl back alleys in search of their next mark. New Orleans by Gaslight, the premier anthology of locally written and locally produced steampunk poetry and fiction, all set in Victorian New Orleans. Buy it now, available in both paperback and Kindle versions at Amazon.com. New Orleans by Gaslight. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com forward slash shop. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Download the iHeartRadio app to hear The Weekend Geek. Listen at any time or from anywhere. In your car. While sitting on the potty. In the shower. In the shower with a loved one. Welcome back. This is The Weekend Geek on News Talk 99.5. This is your host, D Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian Held. I, the, the voice guy, he's getting naughty. He is. We're going to have to write him a strongly worded letter, <laughs> apparently. Now, as always, we strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Weekend Geek. Check out our website at twigradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio and the Instagram's The Weekend Geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, if you miss any part of tonight's show or you want to hear your favorite part again you can find us on spreaker.com or download spreaker for your smartphone or tablet you can also find us on itunes youtube the iheart radio app and at wrno.com wow well well said have you said that before (laughs) just a few times just a few times 
All right. Well, you were you ready to get into this week in geek history? Yes, sir. Did we miss anything? Um, I don't believe. Well, so next so. next week we are going to have Scungy, and he's really going to break down all the E three stuff, and ideally we'll have a hell of a lot more information with more details. Yeah, because Bethesda is what in an hour? Um, About an hour no, and ten minutes. No, it's eleven p.m. Oh, it's eleven p.m. Yes. Oh, nine like Pacific or whatever. Yes. Man, I know. Stupid East West coasters. I don't even know which coast you're on. Yeah, and uh, I'm still working on booking a guest for next week, so I don't have that information yet. Well, damn it, Brian. I'll what? fire you like Scungy. No, you won't. All right, this week in geek history. This week in geek history. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my God! This week in geek history is brought to you by Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, read by Brian Held. Available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. This week in geek history. Yes! Oh my God! Da-na-na, da-na-na. Wow. All oh. right, Brian. All right, sir. You ready to get started? I'm super ready. All right. June 5th, 1978. Taito introduces the classic arcade game Space Invaders in Japan. Really? Yes, that was when it first came out. Uh, it, of course, it was uh, hugely influential in the video games industry at the time. And what's amusing is that uh, Japan at the time experienced a shortage of 100 yen coins that were used to play the arcade games. Get out, really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. They were all jammed in the in the <laughs> slots, much like Pong was when it was first introduced right. in that bar, yeah. Good Lord, man, that's crazy. So Taito, they, they, didn't they do like Double Dragon and a whole bunch of other yeah, console that, games? Yeah, they've done a ton of stuff but, over the years. You know, Space Invaders, I always, I can't hear that, that name of the title of that game without thinking Space Invaders, that movie. Yeah. That movie was so horribly awesome. Mm-hmm. It, so bad it's good. Yes, it was like little midget little green men, and and you know they were, it was just, hilarity ensued. They did uh, one of my wife's favorites, Bubble Bobble. What, what a what? Bubble Bobble, you know? Come on! Oh, oh, where you shoot the bubbles? And yeah, you with make little all dragon the dragon. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves that game. Oh, of course. All right, another video game reference on June sixth, nineteen eighty four. The classic video game Tetris is released in the Soviet Union. Really, it was actually released in the Soviet mm-hmm. Union. Yeah, that's well. The the game designer and I'm, I'd murder his name if I tried it, but he is Russian. Yeah, he created the game. I just go with Ivan. <laughs> so I mean, well, I always wonder why they had the little onion domes on each side of it. I mean, I thought that was just because I don't know Tetris was some some sort of I don't know some weird Russian word. No, no, it's a, so it's, it was so it was an attempt during the Cold War to take over the minds of our innocent young American minds. Yes, make them zombies by just forcing them to you know compile lines of blocks you know in order. It was, it was probably some sort of military training exercise <laughs> for, for the young you know upcoming commies. Probably. Yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. you know this is how you, you put in the nuclear codes in the nuclear vessels. <laughs> Make America go boom. But yeah the, the, the name Tetris is two words. It's the, the first half of the word is, is Tet. It's it's Tetra something. It's, it's for a, a four sided object type deal and then the last half is uh, Tennis. Is the other because the guy's favorite game was tennis. So. Four sided tennis. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. We went too far down that rabbit hole. We What's did. next? Um, <laughs> it's, Sometimes you don't want to chase the bit. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's uh, one you have to guess. It's uh, June 7th, 1985. All right, I'm going to set this up and, and give you some clues here. All okay. right. Um, it is directed by Richard Donner, Okay. written by Steven Spielberg and Chris Columbus. And starring Sean Austin, Josh Brolin. Goonies. There you Goonies! go. Goonies. <laughs> Come on. That's Goonies, man. Everybody do the truffle shuffle. Yeah. Either that, either that or Rudy. Sean Astin. You know, he only mm-hmm. had like three movies. Rudy, Goonies, and, uh, you know, uh, the Lord of the Rings. Right. And uh, uh, Short Round's in here, too. Yeah, Short Round. I call my yeah. kids Short Round. <laughs> All right, uh, next item is kind of silly. Uh, June 8th, 2007. Ah! Astronaut Steven Swanson brings the Firefly and Serenity DVDs into space to permanently uh, reside in the International Space Station video library. Wow. How cool is that? It's because Fox can't cancel stuff up there. (laughs) Like, yeah, cancel me now, (laughs) bastards. (laughs) 
I'm in space. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't hold a grudge. No, no nobody does. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Bring Firefly back. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> never Jesus. gonna happen. I know. No, I know. All right, what's next? Um, this is interesting. June ninth, nineteen o two. Uh, sees the opening of the Horn and Hearted Automat Restaurant. It's the very first restaurant with vending machine service. Oh, was that, was that in like New York or something? Uh, let's. See, it was in um, on Chestnut Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So, so like, like it, it was. I always picture in the movies, like uh, you know, where, where they had little people in the back putting stuff in the little windows, or was it? What did somebody actually come and stock it from the other other no, side? No, no, it's this. You know, behind it, they stuff the 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 little windows, and yeah. then you just put your money in and open the little window. Wow! And, so, uh, so it's so it's like a Piccadilly, but you know, just creepier. Well, let's see. Um, yeah, they had to place nickels in a slot next to the compartment t- containing the food. You turn a knob, the food revolves in place, and then they take what they want. Man, how cheap was the food? Uh, coffee and pie both cost a nickel damn uh turkey white turkey and gravy 25 cents good lord and chicken pot pie macaroni and cheese mashed mm. potatoes blah 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 all that stuff mm. um in 1912 they opened a second location in Times square Ooh. and they eventually expanded to be america's first major fast food chain wow 85 locations at their height of success look at that i know and where are they now um, They're actual vending machines. <laughs> right. Transformers. They, they must have moved to Japan because I've got friends who are like in Japan now and they're taking pictures. I'm seeing their, their trip and there's vending machines everywhere. Well, that's, that's because they're a good 80 years behind us. What? <laughs> or ahead of us, man. I mean, no. You know, they're cutting out the middle Fallout man. Fallout was just a game, man. <laughs> Fallout was just a game. We're not going to go all retro again. All right. All as right. As we'd like to. Okay. Uh, my last item here is uh, June 11th. 1978. Texas Instruments introduces as an educational device for elementary children the speak and spell. Oh, no. That was so awesome. I love the speak and spell, yeah. man. That was good times, man. You could, you could make it say bad words, too. Yeah, yeah you yeah. could. You could. And I remember how when... Uh, you, there was some comedian who had a really good bit where, I, you know, how how he'd make it say, like, really messed up things and just <laughs> right, right. sound like a demon. Just <laughs> roar, roar, roar. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I wish I had some, like, audio of a speak, speak and spell. And what's what's interesting, too, is, uh, of course, there's an anniversary of a, an old movie, uh, E.T., this week. Oh, yeah, And it was right. featured in that. E.T., if you remember. It was. Shall yes. we play a game? That's about the closest I can get to speak and spell right now. <laughs> All right. If speak and spell got angry. No, jeez. <laughs> All right, you ready for some birthdays? Sure thing. All right, on the 5th, Mark Wahlberg. Hey, Wahlbergers. Yeah. <laughs> Marky Mark. Mm-hmm. Don't uh, forget the Funky Bunch. Yeah, I know. He does not like the Funky Bunch. I'll bet he does He does not like having that brought up. You know, it's like, hey, dude, it's, sorry, you wore parachute pants. Yeah, he's moved on. Well, yeah, now he's doing commercials. Uh, well, and uh, Transformers. Transformers movies, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the 6th, Robert England. Oh, uh, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger, yeah. yeah. He was also in V, the original series, if you remember. He was. He was the nerdy guy. Mm-hmm. He was like the really awkward, but he was a friend of the of the human. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm really an alien, honey. He fell in love with an earthling and took off his face. <laughs> <laughs> On the seventh, uh, Carl Urban. Oh, well, Judge Dredd slash, uh, what's his name, uh, Bones? Um, he's McCoy. also in, yes, he's also in Lord of the Rings. Was um, he? He was uh, one of the horse lords. Um, he was. You're right. Yes. You're right. Um, on the eighth, Colin Baker, the sixth doctor. Okay. Uh, not related to Tom. Okay. Yeah. Why would they pick the same last names? Uh, well, who knows? Maybe, you know, he fit the part, man. Okay. Uh, on the ninth, Natalie Portman. Oh, Natalie. Mm-hmm. Call me. No, oh, jeez. She's not calling you. She will. You don't, don't know. Don't hold out hope. And, uh... <laughs> One of your favorites on the eleventh, Peter Dinklage. Oh man, that is I, w- I want to party with that guy. I bet he parties hard. <laughs> you ever seen that that Knights of Badassery? The the movie he was in. Yeah. Oh my god, that was such an awesome. <laughs> they're like they're doing LARP stuff and they accidentally summon a demon. Right, <laughs> that's just fun. It's a ridiculous show. Yes, it is. All right, Brian. Well, it's almost that time. It pal. is almost that time. Um, so, yeah, guys, go check out our new Twitch channel. That's Twig Radio on Twitch.tv. 
And uh, Scungy will be back next week for all the E3 roundup. There's, and look, guys, watch our Facebook page. We're going to be trying to post as much as possible all week long as it happens. Sure thing. So our one-stop, it's your one-stop shop exactly. for all nerd news you need. Facebook.com forward slash Low Egan Geek. Till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. G-F-L. and Johnson, News Talk 99.5 WRNO-FM, New Orleans, and iHeartRadio Station.